Welcome folks to my channel. I'm now focusing on cubic functions in calculus. For that matter, I will just be dealing with components of a cubic function. Components, I mean everything that you need to know before you even attempt to sketch a cubic function. Number one. The equation that defines the cubic function will always be in a form where the degree of the exponent, the highest degree, would be power 3. Now, in this case, I've got ax to power 3 plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Once you see the variable x raised to power 3, you know that we are dealing with a cubic function. Number two, what is it that I need to know now from the equation? The shape of my graph. It is very important to know the shape that the graph is going to take even before you sketch it. Who tells the shape? You see now, A, which I always refer to as a parameter. Parameter A will tell you the shape that the graph will take. When A is positive, your graph will start from there, go to maximum, then decrease again to minimum and go up again. What happens when A is not positive? When A is negative, this is the shape that you are expecting. Folks, it is very important to note the fact that this is telling you that it is a cubic function Parameter A is telling you how your graph should look like when A is positive, when A is negative. From there, what else do we want to know? We want to know where this graph will cut the x-axis. That is where we refer to as x-intercepts. Now for x-intercepts, the value of y must be equal to 0, meaning that that must be equal to 0. Then we fully factorize this using the factor theorem. Your factor theorem and inspection or long division method, which is referred to as algorithm method. Now, we know where the graph is going to cut the x-axis. We now need to know where is this graph going to cut the y-axis. That is what we refer to as y-intercept. Now, for y-intercept, the value of x must be equal to 0, meaning that all those x will be substituted by a zero. Then we get the y-intercept. From the x and the y-intercept, what is it that we need to know again? We need to know the coordinates of these two points. And we refer to those two points in calculus as turning points, number one. We can also refer to them as stationary points. We can also refer to them as local maxima and local minima. Be very careful about that, folks. Now, when we are looking for the turning points, what must we do? We differentiate the given equation of the function f of x 
you differentiate that, then you equate it to zero, the derivative of the function f with respect to x will be equals to zero, then you solve for x. After solving for x, you take the x values that you have, for which it would be x values of the turning points, you substitute them to the original given equation, and they will give you the corresponding y values of the turning points or stationary points or local minima or local maxima. Now, we know the shape. We know the x and the y intercept. We know local minima and local maxima. What else do we want to know? We need to know the point which is referred to as the point of inflection. What is the point of inflection? Let me demonstrate it using the graph. The point of inflection is the point on a cubic function where the function itself changes concavity. If you look at this one, from here right up to there, it was concave down. Now from here right up to there, it is concave up, meaning that at this point, it is where the graph is changing concavity. And the name of this point is referred to as point of inflection. Now, how do we determine the point of inflection? You need to determine the second derivative of the given function, which you have differentiated there. Now, it means that for the point of inflection, what I do, I just differentiate this again to get that and equate it to zero. From there, I solve for x. If they say determine the coordinates of the point of inflection, you take the x value that you get here, you go and substitute into your original given equation of a cubic function. Folks, all these are the components of a cubic function. If you can make it a point that you learn them by heart, you understand them, you master them, I can tell you, you have got a free plus or minus 14 marks in your exam. Thank you very much. Please subscribe to my channel and turn on your notification for new videos. Invite your friends to subscribe. Thank you for watching.